2 Kings chapter number 2. This is a tremendous uh, passage in the Scripture, and it's a prophetic and important passage in the Scripture. Most of you know, in 1 Kings 18, the great man of God, Elijah, prayed down fire from heaven. You know that he had... Uh, forecasted and proclaimed a drought prior to that and then after the fire experience he prays for it to rain and it rains after a three and a half year drought then we find him in chapter 19 discouraged and sitting under a juniper tree we find in that same chapter that God meets with him and encourages him because Elijah thought he was the only one left if you're not careful you'll think you're the only one doing something for God You'll think you're the only one suffering for God's namesake. You'll think you're the only one going through something. Uh, we, we have that tendency. We uh, tend to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. And the Lord showed him in chapter 19, he had uh, 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 7,000 hadn't bowed their knee to Baal. And so, you know, Elijah is getting a lot of help. Well, by the time we get to chapter 2 of 2 Kings chapter 2, we find the man of God is about ready to be blessed, to graduate, to go to heaven. And it wasn't no secret. Uh, the Lord had revealed it to him, and everywhere he goes, people knew about it. We find in the early part of this chapter, he, he goes to three different cities, and every one of them, the sons of the prophets, are sitting around uh, uh, waiting to see if today's the days are going. They all knew about it. Hmm? Can I say people ought to know you're ready to go to heaven? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm interested in his correspondence with Elisha. Notice, if you will, in verse number 8. The Bible says, And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes, and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Let's pray. Our Father... We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for being a good God. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us the next few minutes, encourage us, uplift our spirits. Lord, put something deep down inside of us that will cause us this week to be a light and be a witness for thee in this lost and dark world. And God, I pray you'd help us to set in heavenly places. Use this unworthy vessel. Lord, help your people. That one that's low, I pray that, Lord, you'd lift them up. That one that's weak, I pray you'd strengthen them. That one, Lord, that just needs a special encouragement, I pray that you'd encourage them greatly. Now, Father, we need your help. We need your touch. We need your blessing. For, Lord, without you, we can do nothing. So get glory to your glorious and wonderful and holy name. And, Father, we'll thank you for what you do. For it is in that holy name, that wonderful name, that name above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus, we ask these things. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to several things. I want you to notice, first of all, the miracle. Look at the miracle in verse number 8. The Bible says, And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. Now, they have come to the river of Jordan. The river of Jordan wasn't a creek, it wasn't a stream, it was a river. And this river uh, 
that uh, Naaman went down to and uh, dipped seven times and came up and his uh, leprosy had been cleansed. Uh, uh, this river that was known as the Muddy River, a filthy river, this river is standing in the way uh, of where these two men of God need to be. Uh, and God, uh, 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 through the man of God, Elijah, he takes the mantle and he uh, hits the river and the water spread and they sway uh, and they walk across on dry ground. Uh, now that don't mean much when you just read the Bible, but I would think that's a pretty big miracle. Uh, uh, if you had to get to Cincinnati and there were no bridges uh, and you walked up on the Ohio River uh, and God told you to uh, uh, use what he had given you and you used it and God parted the waters and you walked across that nasty river uh, on dry ground, got to the other side and the waters are swayed, that'd be a pretty big miracle. Uh, now I know we live in a day of Hollywood uh, uh, where we see special effects and that's no big deal to us. Uh, uh, and I know also, uh, uh, Brother Donald, you're new to this thing, not been saved long, uh, uh, but I know we're in a Baptist church, uh, and Baptists aren't supposed to believe in miracles. Uh, we're not supposed to believe in the power of God. Uh, we're not supposed to be excited. Uh, we're supposed to have prune faces. Uh, and if you uh, get a little excited like Brother Phil every now and then, uh, and if you believe in that God's like got all power, uh, and that God can part rivers, uh, and that God can solve problems, uh, and that God can heal, uh, and that God can do great things. Uh, uh, people don't think you're Baptist anymore. They think you're Pentecostal. Uh, uh, friend, you can think whatever you want to me. Uh, I believe the Bible. Uh, I believe that was a, uh, a very filthy river. Uh, and I believe that the man of God uh, uh, wrapped his mantle around and hit it. Uh, and I believe it parted and they walked across. Uh, I believe God uh, uh, was the fourth man in the fire. Uh, I believe them three Hebrews came out not smelling like smoke. Uh, I believe God uh, shut the lion's mouths. Uh, I believe that God parted the Red Sea. I believe that God's in the miracle business. If you've been born again, you once were lost, but now you found a friend. One of the greatest miracles that God would come to a sinner and have mercy and pity on you, convict you of your sins. When you called out in faith and repentance, God save you, God change you, God take up residence in your life. God give you a home in heaven. What a miracle. Hallelujah. Can I say God's in the miracle business? The Baptist may not be, but God is. And thank God for miracles. We see the miracle. I want you to notice the mindset of Elisha. Look in verse number 9. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Now notice Elisha's mindset. Now you've got to understand that Elijah tells Elisha in verse number 2, the Lord sent him to Bethel. He said, you tarry here. And, the Lord, and Elisha says to Elijah, As my soul liveth, as thy soul liveth, uh, wherever you go, I'm not forsaking thee. And then we find a, a, a little bit later that the Lord says, uh, 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 or Elijah says to Elisha, Terry, here I pray thee, Lord, send me to Jericho. And again, uh, 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 Elisha says, As the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And then we find he takes him down there to, Jer to, to Jordan, the same thing. Uh, 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 we see that uh, Elisha is committed, Elisha's steadfast, uh, Elisha's faithful, and that brings him to verse number 9. Can I help you with something? God's never going to ever promote somebody to a position of authority that hasn't learned to follow and understand the importance of leadership. This man has been committed to serve under his leader all the way to the end. And because he's been faithful and because he's had his place and because he's done what he's supposed to do, verse number 9 happens and Elijah, the man of God, gives him a blank check. He says, what should I do for thee? Much like God told Solomon, what should I do for thee? In both cases, we find Elisha and Solomon did not ask for wealth. They did not ask for fame. They did not ask for what most people sitting in Baptist churches would ask for. They didn't ask for healing. Didn't ask for long life. Didn't ask for all those things. 
Solomon asked for wisdom. Elisha says, I want double what you got. He said, I've seen the power of God on you, and I want a double portion of your spirit. Hmm? Well, what a mindset. Amen. Huh? Oh, I would to God that we wouldn't say, boy, I'd like to be like brother so-and-so. I, I would to God we'd say, boy, I'd like to have double what they got. Boy, I've known some men of God. Oh, had, had God all over them. Boy, what a privilege to be like them, but I'd, I'd rather have double what they had. Are you listening? His mindset was, I don't want to be satisfied just being like you. I want double what you got. Hmm? I want to see all the fullness of God. We see the mindset. We see the miracle. Now notice the mantle, verse number 15, uh, 13. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Now Elijah told Elisha, what you ask is a hard thing. He says, well, I'll tell you what, if you see me when I'm taken up, it shall be so. And we find that when Elijah is graduated, that Elisha takes up his mantle. There's a difference, though, this time. This mantle isn't the same mantle that fell from Elijah. Oh, it looks like it. But you see, it's got a little more juice in it than it had before. I challenge you to go read the life of Elisha, and you'll find that he did twice the miracles Elijah did. Hmm? Because they got a double portion. Now this mantle is very important. It was just a cloth. Can I help you something? Moses' staff was just a stick. See, we want to spiritualize everything and glorify everything. This was just a cloth. It was just a mantle. It was just a cloak. But you see, God touched it. Moses' staff was just a stick, but God touched it. Are you listening? David's sling was just a leather strap, but God touched it. Hmm? You see, anything that God touches, it becomes uh, powerful. Hmm? And this mantle represents the power of God. It represents the presence of God. And it represents a purpose from God. God never empowers something to do nothing. And God never empowers a person to do nothing. He always has a purpose for anything that he touches and desires to use. Now, with all that said, look in verse number 11. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Uh, now, can I say, many people will show this as a picture of the rapture. Here's a man of God. He was, and then he was not. He was walking and talking, and all of a sudden he was, he was translated from this world to the glory world. He doesn't see death, and he goes straight to heaven. Now, that certainly does make a comparison, but there's just one problem. If this is the, a picture of the rapture, why was Elisha left? I got news for you. When the rapture happens, the translation of saints, all God's youngins are going. Hmm? Huh? There aren't any believers going to be left behind. Matter of fact, you've got that movie series or that book series, that's a bunch of bunk. Because God's not leaving any of His behind. None of His are going to face great tribulation. Are you listening? Uh, when that trumpet sounds, uh, when the voice of the archangel shouts, uh, when we hear, come up hither, uh, if your blood was born again, you're out of here. Hallelujah. It's not really a picture of the rapture. Uh, it is a picture of a blessing. And uh, in times gone by, I have preached what that really is a picture of. And the truth of the matter is, it's a picture of true revival where things you used to put confidence in has to be put away with so you can now put your confidence in the things of God. Mm, but I'm not going to preach on that. I've kind of preached along the, this lines before as far as using the same title I'm going to use tonight because I can't think of a better title. But I got, to, I got to thinking about this on my way home from my over the river and through the woods of Indiana. 
And I'm thinking on the way home, looking at the sky was eerie yesterday in Indiana. Between it being cold and, and cloudy and windy and a lot of things, I got to thinking and just meditating because my darling wife, she was tired. She took a nap on me. My father-in-law in the back seat, he took a nap on me. So it's just me and the Lord driving down the road. So I might as well talk to him and enjoy his company and his presence. And so I got to thinking about all that. And I got to thinking about Elijah. That man of God, all that he saw. He's at the brook Cherith. And God sent the ravens to feed him in the morning and in the evening. When the brook dries up, he goes to Zarephath. And there the widow woman who don't have any more meal or any more oil uh, makes him a cake. Uh, and the rest of her days, uh, uh, her crews had oil uh, and her meal barrel had meal. Uh, and God blessed there. Uh, and then he shows up. Uh, and you know what he did on Mount Carmel uh, when he prayed down fire and he defeated the uh, uh, 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of the grove. Uh, then he prays down rain. Uh, I mean, what a man of God. Uh, and all that he accomplished. Uh, and here he is. Uh, uh, he's about ready to cross over. Uh, he don't go by death. Uh, he doesn't go by a stroke. Uh, he doesn't go by a heart attack. Uh, hey, uh, uh, God sends a special chariot of fire to pick him up. Uh, and hey, he goes out in a blaze of glory. Uh, I got to thinking about that. Uh, I got to thinking about what a way to go. Uh, hey, can I say there is a good way to go out. Uh, there is a way to uh, worth the, uh, uh, going into glory for. I don't want to live into heaven. Uh, I want to go out in a place of glory. Uh, I want to do uh, all I can for God's glory. Uh, and when I check out of here, uh, I want folks to say what a way to go. Uh, hey, I got to thinking about that. Uh, I want to preach for a few minutes on what a way to go. Uh, uh, can I say first of all, uh, I want to go out of fighting. Uh, I don't want to go out in defeat. Uh, I don't want to go out surrendering the white flag. Uh, I want to go out earnestly contending for the faith. Uh, which was once delivered unto the saints. Uh, I want to go out uh, uh, fighting for the name of Christ. Uh, I want to go out giving it all I got for his honor and for his glory. It's funny today. Christian was boiling my mouthpiece. I thought, what in the world? He's got fight training this week. They started a little bit last week. And they started showing him how to punch. And how to do this. And how to do that. This week they're going to get punched. They have to have a mouthpiece huh? and uh, everything. Uh, but he said there's a, a kid they paired him up with about his size. Uh, and he's holding the, the heavy bag. And Christian's are punching the bag. And I mean the boy's put together now. He's stronger than an ox. Uh, and he keeps hitting that thing. Uh, and he's moving that guy back. Uh, and he keeps moving that. Finally that guy says, will you quit it? You're hurting me. Uh, you're hurting me. Uh, Hey, I'm glad I didn't raise a boy. Uh, when he hits the bag, the bag hits him. Are you listening? Uh, hey, uh, uh, we ought to go out of this thing uh, taking punches and jabs at the devil. Uh, we ought to go out of this thing uh, fighting, uh, uh, not being satisfied to every sinner hears that Jesus loves them. Uh, we ought to go out of this thing uh, uh, showing you can live for God, uh, be right, do right, spit right, walk right, talk right, uh, and still have the joy of the Lord. Uh, hey, I want to go out of fighting uh, and I say this uh, what a way to go I want to go out on fire I mean the last thing we see of Elijah he's on a chariot of fire pulled by horses of fire I'd be safe to say he was on fire when he went out uh, I want to go out on fire uh, I don't want to be dead driftwood uh, I don't want to be a old deadhead Baptist uh, I want to have a shout in my soul uh, I want to have song of praise unto God uh, I want to go out on fire for God uh, I want to go out uh, uh, just as hungry as I was when I got in hallelujah huh a lot of Baptists look like uh, the mother-in-law moved in and one of them got pruned faces. Look like they got gas and indigestion. Just a mess. Well, I enjoy being saved. Uh, a lot of people say, why do you got to shout and holler and scream so much when you preach? Well, that's the way God made me. Hmm? Listen, watching Sydney play ball this weekend, I was a hooping and a hollering. That's my little girl out there. I love her more than life itself. Uh, 
But can I say this? I love someone more than I love her. His name is Jesus. When I get to thinking about Him and all He's done for me, when I get to thinking about the great hand of grace and that God saved me, God's delivered me, God's been good to me, I look at some of you that don't shout and I say, what's wrong with you? Hadn't God been good to you? He'd been good to me. And hey, I want to go out on fire. If I'll shout over a stupid basketball game, why wouldn't I shout about glory? Uh, some of you boy you really brag on them grandkids but when I give you an opportunity to brag on Jesus you just clam up shame 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 as Gomer Pyle used to say and I want to tell you something you that get a little nervous when it gets noisy you don't want to go to heaven this is the most quiet world you're ever going to see if you die and go to hell this is the most quiet world you're ever going to see I'm going to hear tell you, I've, lived, I've read the Bible. Well, they're shouting in heaven. They're shouting to the Lamb of God and praising Him and worshiping Him. I want to go out on fire. Can I say this? What a way to go. I want to go out faithful. Yes, sir. Do you know how many Baptist preachers I've known over the years? They're no longer preaching the book. you know how many deacons that I know have known over the years and are no longer in church? You know how many Sunday school teachers I've known over the years that are no longer teaching the book? Do you know how many that have just faithful church members I've known over the years you can't find them tonight with a pack of bloodhounds? Boy, I don't want that said of me. I don't want to be a has-been. I don't want to be a used-to-be. I don't be, want to be a once-was. I want to be just what I've always been. I want to be faithful because he's faithful and true. Yes, Brother Clint, he is wonderful. It's one of his names, but he's also faithful and true. And there's a lot of things I can't be, but one thing I can be, I can be faithful. Hmm? I just want to be faithful to him. He's always been faithful to me. I want to go out faithful. You know, there's a testimony just in that, that you was faithful. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. Huh? He said, henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, not only for me, but for unto all those also that love is appearing. I want to go out faithful. I want to go out loving Jesus and being faithful to the end. I thought about this. What a way to go. I want to go out fruitful. I want to go out making a difference in somebody else's life. Fruitful. A few weeks ago, knew winter was coming. Boy, that's a dirty word, isn't it? <laughs> but it's coming. Miss Nett asked me yesterday, she said, why does it have to get so cold? I said, so it'll kill all the mosquitoes. Hmm. I had to think of something good. Uh, but new winter was coming. And so we had some bear areas in, in the yard and we paid for the lawn service to come put that liquid seed down I was already starting to see some fruit from that but there was some some low areas where the you know the dirt had gotten low or there's some holes in the ground so so we went out and we bought some topsoil and we put topsoil and filled up some holes and planted some new grass seed put straw on it all those kind of things getting ready for winter because you know the snow packs all that down you get a lovely lawn in the summer really I could care less but you know Miss Annette she loves her flowers she loves her plants she loves a pretty lawn and all that and I love her and if she loves a pretty lawn I'm going to have to make sure he has a pretty lawn I wish we lived on the back 70 somewhere in Indiana where nobody sees the lawn <laughs> but that's not the case Winter's coming, so we made preparation. Well, you ought to see the lawn now. All that rain we got last week, the grass is already coming up. It's real green. We got grass in areas around our, our, our front lawn where we haven't had grass in a long time. It looks so pretty. It looks so nice. See, we put seed in the ground wanting some fruit. And today we got to enjoy looking at that fruit. It just looks lovely. looks pretty. And I can't wait now till spring because it's really going to look good then. Huh? Well, listen, in our spiritual life, you're not going to be fruitful unless you plant some seed. And sometimes you've got to do a little work beyond that. 
Sometimes you got to plant it. Sometimes you got to water it. Sometimes you got to uh, uh, prune around it and put some soil down. Uh, sometimes it takes a little work. But can I help you with something? You'll never go wrong investing in people's lives. You'll never go wrong trying to help somebody, trying to be an encouragement to somebody, trying to just uh, 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 let people know how good Jesus really is and just keep putting water on that seed you sow. I want to go out being fruitful. I want to go out just making a difference in somebody's life. Uh, listen, you don't understand this. If you get to heaven and it's said of you, you impacted somebody else's life to get there, what else could be said of you? What else could be said of you that would be any greater than that? That God used you to impact somebody else's life to be there. Isn't that really what we're supposed to be doing? Mm. I want to go out fruitful. I want to go out doing all I can for him because he did his very best for me. Huh? What a way to go. What a long to grow out fruitful. Huh? Then I thought about this. Hallelujah, Brother Phil. You ready? You ready? Yes, sir. One of these days we're going by flight. Hmm? Amen. We're going out quicker than Elijah went out. Sure. Elisha saw him get on the chariot yeah. and saw the chariot take off. Yeah. We're going in a moment and twinkling an eye. There's no time for any chariot. Are you listening? Uh, we're going by flight. Sure. Uh, hallelujah. What a blessing to be on Delta when that thing kicks in uh, and she starts heading down the runway. Uh, and our uh, boy, all of a sudden, the nose of that thing lifts up uh, and you start going straight for the sky. Uh, every time I'm on a plane, I'm thinking one day, hallelujah, this is slow motion uh, uh, compared to what we're going to have. Hey, we're going from here to there in a moment in an instant in a twinkling of an eye uh, hallelujah we're out of here uh, what a way to go uh, hey I just soon cheat death myself uh, I just soon not go by the grave uh, hallelujah I'm looking to go out uh, by command uh, but hey if I do go by the grave I'm still coming out of there one day uh, and I'm going to glory what a way to go Amen. let me ask you this are you ready to go? We could go by flight tonight. That's right. Huh? Now listen, Miss Mary, you've never taken a trip that you didn't plan for it, that you didn't pack for it, and that you wasn't ready to go when it's time to go. We're going to take the trip of all trips. Have you been planning on it? Have you packed for it? Mm. Mm. Said, Preacher, you said this morning we can't take a U-Haul behind. Oh, I'm not talking about that kind of packing. I'm talking about packing everything that you need over there. And the only thing you can take with you over there are people. Yeah. Mm. Have you packed for it? Mm. Have you let your loved ones know they need to be ready? Have you let your neighbors know? Have you let your friends know? Are you packed for it? That's what laying up treasures in heaven is all about. Mm -mm. And are you ready to go? Huh? Now, if you go over here to Delta and you try to get on the plane with certain things in your carry-on bag, they won't let you get on. My knucklehead son, back in May, had his... his army backpack thing and he didn't take a magazine out of it full loaded clip in his he did he about didn't get on the plane but that didn't get on with him there are some baggies you got that you can't take to heaven with you Amen. it's gonna uh, upset your flight so why don't you get rid of the baggage now yeah. it'll help you when it's time to take flight are you listening hmm? God help us to be ready Elijah was ready. He knew his departure was at hand. And he was ready to go. Are you ready to go? Hmm? Elisha longed for what Elijah had times two. Hmm? While you're here, you ought to long for twice as much as what you got. Lord, give me more of you and less of me. John said it this way. He must increase and I must decrease. Amen. Hmm? Hmm. But there are ways to go. Are you going to purpose in your heart and mind you're going to go a fighting? You're going to go out on fire? 
you're going to go being faithful and fruitful, you ought to be ready. Yes, sir. Just friend, I'm watching this thing. I don't know how much more time we got. I know Jesus is coming soon. I know this world isn't getting any better. It's getting worse. I know everything that the Scripture said would happen has happened. And the only thing keeping Jesus from coming and taking His church out of here is the Father saying, Go get your bride. We're that close. We're that close. Hmm? You study out where God told Israel when she became a nation, that generation wouldn't pass away. Are you listening? You do know that that generation, if God increased it 70 years, we're already living on borrowed time. We're living on that plus 70 blessed years. I'm telling you, Jesus is about ready to take his church out of here. I'm telling you, the Antichrist is ready to take over. Are you ready? You ought to be ready. And how are you going to go out? Hmm? I don't want him to be disappointed in me when he sees me. I want one of them, well done, thou good and faithful servants. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Uh, you might not be able to be me, and I might not be able to be you, but we can all be what Jesus wants us to be. Amen. Are you ready? What a way to go. Boy, I got to thinking of them in the Bible, and I won't bring them up about people, how they went out. People like Stephen, and like John the Baptist, and men that, how they went out and met Jesus. I wonder what will be written about us and how we went out. Friend, that can all be determined on your love for Jesus. What's, the only difference between them and us is, is the time they lived in. But yeah. they loved Jesus so much that they went out the way they did because he meant so much to them. How about you tonight? How are you going to go out? Why don't you let that be determined by your decisions tonight that you're going to finish this thing in a way that brings glory to God. What a way to go. You ready to go? If so, how are you going out? Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Maybe tonight you need God to do a miracle in your life. I got good news. He's in the miracle business. Maybe your mindset's been wrong. You need to come and ask God to change your mind about some things. Maybe you need to come ask God for the mantle, the power of God, the presence of God, and a purpose from God in your life. Maybe you need to come say, God, help me in my fruitful ways, my faithful ways. And God, help me be on fire. Maybe you just need to come say, God, show me if I'm ready to get out of this thing, if I'm ready to come home. And if not, what's lacking in my life? Folks are praying. They picked out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for this way of faith. Lord, this journey, you have been good to us. Lord, help us to be good to you. Help us to bless you. Help us, Lord, to be fruitful and faithful until the end. Go out of fighting and on fire that you'll be pleased. Now, God, there might be some folks here tonight that's struggling. I pray you'd help them. Now, Lord, just speak to hearts, get glory in this invitation, and help us all to be ready to go when it's our time to go. Lord, whether by the grave or by the rapture, help us to be ready. And Father, we'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.